muscle cars, electric power to the wheels. Arc Escapes reviews, Arc Escapes builds. Arc Escapes modifies RC testing around the track. Arc Escapes discovers what they boast and what they lack. Steering cars remotely, building better machines. Testing cars around the track, remote wheel spinning dreams. Radio control, little cars that rock and roll. Race them in the dirt, race them on the sand, race them on the road, any surface on the land. Hiya, how do? This is Chris again, and uh, we're going to do another RC video. That's right. Uh, this time's going to be a little bit different. The last video was restoring my old hotshot, uh, which was not very easy. It was really difficult. Uh, so I went into the uh, attic uh, the other day again, and I uh, looked at my old uh, Hornet, Tamiya Hornet, which was the first car I ever had, the first radio control car and it was not in good shape either. And I just didn't want to go through the same process because it was in even worse condition, okay? So I thought I'd treat myself a little bit. So Tamiya offers these uh, already built models, which I found out. Did not know they did that. They're called Tamiya XSA series, uh, where they build everything for you except for the electronics. I think you can get a Tamiya XB, which is everything and the electronics, but I would like one without the electronics. So I can put my own electronics in, since I don't like Tamiya electronics, uh, the speed controls and all the engines and everything like that. Uh, but anyway, so here we go. Let's unbox a Tamiya Hornet X-SA. And what you need, the tools you need for this, is a pair of scissors, preferably a sharp pair of scissors, a Kalfaloon pair of scissors, and then a nice sharp knife here um, to uh, access the Hornet, which is within a box. So, scissors and knife. So, now let's get it up here. Oh, here we go. Oh, and here we go. Oh, look at that thing. Isn't that a beaut? Let's put this over here. Isn't this a beaut? So, Expert Semi-Assembled Series. That's what it stands for, yeah? And the by Tamiya, and it's required is the RC equipment, and also the power source, but also, uh, speed controllers is missing too and things like that, but um, that's okay because we're gonna put new ones in uh, Oh, isn't that gorgeous brings back those memories, you know, so let's have a look at that It's a big box big box. There it is. Okay, so let's see if we can open this thing. Let's see where do we open it Let's see what's the easiest way to open this thing Let's see here. Oh Here we go. No, let's go say um, Oh, let's see what we got here. Ah, here we go. Yep, got to find the right way. It's easy, but here we go, sticky, sticky tape. There we go. Be careful with the knife, always be careful. So let's undo this right here, like this. Okay, like this. Okay. Now, we're going to pull it out of the box. Okay, so here we go. So slowly, slowly, here's the reveal. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, oh yes. Yes. Whoa. There she goes. Fantastic. Wow. Just look at that. The memories are all flowing back. Got a deer in my eye. Absolute love it. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, let's get this thing out. So, uh, let's see what we've got here. So, oh, looks like we've got the instructions and some parts that come with it, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, it looks like it's got zip ties on this thing. I hate zip ties. So, first tool is a pair of scissors. So, we'll get the pair of scissors here, and then we'll hold the hornet here, so she doesn't fall out. 
And then, oh, we see the zip ties right there. See, whoa, 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 hold on. Oh, it's, coming, it's already loose. Hold on, hook. All right, one, one zip tie. Two zip tie. Three zip tie. Okay, there we go. Toss them away. Pull these things out. Pull these things out. There we go. Just zip ties, don't need to worry about it. Okay, let's turn it around here. Okay, and now she should come off the base. Oh, there we go. Don't need the box, so there goes the box, another zip tie. So here we go, let's look at this baby. And it's all finished. I don't have to do anything except for electronics. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at the paint job on this, absolutely perfect. Absolutely, look at, the guy's got a blue helmet there. His, his face, little face is there, it's painted pink. But, but you know what? He has no eyeballs. He won't be able to see where he's driving. I guess I have to do something to this. I'm gonna to have to put little eyeballs in him uh, so he can see his little pupils. Um, but look at that, absolutely fantastic. Brings back the memories of uh, my old Hobbit. And now I've got it back. This is a reissue, of course, so it's not vintage. It's brand new, brand spanking new. Um, but I guess it's um, got the same parts in it. Some parts might be upgraded. I came across that problem on the Hot Shop, uh, redoing it when I ordered new parts. They didn't fit. Um, but this one um, is already done. Look at this. Oh, there's the old, the old Hornet gearbox. Look at that. Yes. That's actually, um, I didn't know this, but that actually is the same gearbox that's in the Tamiya uh, lunchbox. Um, there you go, we're using parts for different cars. And then the old uh, wheels here. Oh, let's see, hold on, let's see. Ah, uh, the old puffy wheels. I love those puffy wheels. Oh, that feels good. Oh no, still stop that, gotta stop that. Um, let's see, it's a smell test. Mmm, I love the smell of uh, Tamiya rubber wheels at night. Yes, love that. Um, look at this. So obviously there's no servo in this. The wheels just go back and forwards. They are strapped down by more zip ties here. Um, let's take this body off and take a look at it. So it's put down with these pins here, just like before. So take the pins out here. And let's look at this, look at the body. Let's just look at the paint job on that body. Just look. You can't do better than this. It's probably factory done. Probably isn't hand done. It's probably done by machines. Wow, look at that. Look, look, at the, look at the reverse side. Normally when I paint bodies, it's a mess on the reverse side. This is like super clean. Check that out. I don't know if I can even run this. It's too good to run. I might have to get another body and just paint it myself or have a running body and use this for show. This is too good to run. But very nice body right there. And then here's the uh, chassis right here. It's just a plastic tub with the uh, little sidebars. I actually use them to kind of hold it by right here, like that. Um, but yes, look at that. Of course, I'll be putting in all the electronics, which we're gonna do after this. Um, check out, check out the suspension, the old Tamiya Hornet suspension. That isn't very good, is it? Just a little spring, a little screw, and a bit of plastic, and that's it. Um, we're gonna be upgrading that, I think, at one time. I don't know when, later on in the future. And then the back, at least it has some shocks here, some some shocks. I didn't screw that down very well, did they? Yeah, some things need tightening. Um, we're gonna need to do some things to it, but we'll see as we go. But so, yeah, that's it. There's the plastic tub. So, very happy with it. And I guess what's in here are the instructions. Let's see here. Let's see here, hold on. There we go. So let's have a look at the instructions here. See what we got. So, We've got the, um, the Hornet instructions out, and it does come, looks like with a full book of instructions here. So in case I need to take anything apart, I know how to do it. With the Hot Shot, I had to actually go online and look for a PDF instruction manual, but um, it was a little bit harder to find the correct screws, because you know, everything on these old manuals is to scale when you're trying to find the screws, which is very handy dandy. So, fantastic, I'm glad that they give you the full manual. And it's got the same pictures as the old one too. 
Um, here's one that puts your electronics. Let's see what else we've got here. Oh, what not to do and what to do. Yep, no, well, I don't care about that. I just do what I want to do. Um, more instructions. And it looks like they do provide you with a speed control. It's a Tamiya electronic speed control, which um, is honestly isn't very good. So we're going to be putting in a nice reedy team associated um, speed control. They're a heck of a lot better. They come with fans and everything. Uh, just more conducive for racing, just really good. But these, um, no, I'm not going to put that in. Oh, got some servo parts here to put onto my servo for the steering. That's great. And then let's see what else we got. We've got some little screws here. I don't know what they're for, but uh, some servo mounts, some servo posts right here. So yeah, it comes with, um, an, oh, wait, oh, something else here. And here's the iconic Tamiya wheel changer, the little T-bar, I don't know what they call it, but this allows you to change the tires and, and uh, any other screws that uh, bolts or nuts that Tamiya has, this can take care of. It's a handy dandy tool for Tamiya people. Uh, that's all that comes with it. So, am I impressed? I am very impressed. Uh, thumbs up. Double thumbs up. Um, I can't wait to start putting electronics into this baby. All right, Hornet, here we come. Let's do it. There we go. This is all the electronics that are going to the Hornet. And it's all mostly uh, team associated, reedy electronics and because uh, that's what I prefer and it's the it's a brushless system I don't like brushed either so I find it a lot more reliable uh, so let's do some uh, unboxing but first let's look at the battery I always use a Jens Ace and there we go a battery which is a 5000 Ma with a Dean's plug connector because I love Dean's plug connector so everything I have is on a Dean's plug connector okay um, and then next we've got the receiver, which goes with this transmitter. And uh, this receiver is not a Sanyo one. It's actually a, um, an off-brand, uh, a generic brand, say, RC model accessories. Uh, but this is a whole lot cheaper than the Sanyo receivers. The Sanyo receivers that go with the MTS system are like $100. This is like $45, less than half the price. Uh, and also, this is actually a better uh, receiver. I've actually put this in some other cars. Um, it actually, uh, the plugs actually fit in this receiver. Whereas a Sanyo one, you've got to cut and chip them away, the plugs, in order to fit them in the hole. But this one, you don't have to. So let's unbox this. So here we go. There we go, unbox this. And um, yeah, it's not packaged, they even have a piece of tape on it. It's not packaged very well, but the main thing is, it looks like it's intact. Yep, no damage, it's intact. So here is the receiver. It's an aerialless one, because I don't like the aerials. And it's just a very good receiver. And then you got here, you got the instructions that come with it here. So you know how to install it. So we've got the receiver, we're gonna put this to the side. And we don't need the box. Next thing is uh, I got a reedy servo for the steering to make the wheels on the Hornet turn. Uh, so let's open this. I'm gonna do the tape here, gotta take the scissors. Be very careful, just do a little snip. A little snip. There we go. Okay, so now let's open the box and see what we got. So here we go. Oh, and it's nicely packaged in here with bubble wrap right here. So we take, it's got some loose bubble wrap here. We can get rid of that. There we go. And then here, we pull out the servo here, which is nicely wrapped in bubble wrap. Don't need the box. And we take this out of the bubble wrap. There we go. So here is the reedy servo, and it's got metal parts. Here you can see the metal parts, got plenty of torque, more than enough for the Hornet. It's gonna be a very good, reliable servo for the Hornet. And then after you take the bubble wrap off, you can play with it. This is a little bubble wrap, so it's not as good, but let's see how it pops. I can hear it a little bit. Yeah, not too much, it isn't big bubbles. But anyway, still fun to play with, so it gives you something to play with. So good marks on that. So the next thing we're gonna do is open the Reedy electronic speed controller. And I really like the Reedy electronic speed controller, it's very uh, reliable. This is the SC600. Um, I use these in all my buggies. 
Uh, so let's take a look at this. Let's take the scissors. I'm gonna cut the tape here. Oh, there we go. There we go, Put the tape. And then we're gonna take the box and then we're gonna see what it looks like. You're gonna see it before me, you ready? Man, what does it look like? What, is, it, does, is it packed good? Let's oh, yes, look at that, it's packed very well. It's got this little piece of plastic here, that plastic container, and it separates this with the wires and everything. So in transit, yeah, if it's in the truck and it's wobbling around, it doesn't, doesn't move a lot, doesn't get damaged. So take this out here, and it's all in one piece. There's the switch right here for the electronic speed controller. And I like these because these are waterproof uh, electronic speed controllers. And they're for uh, brushless motors, the unsensored type, not the censored type. Uh, I just keep it easy and basic. Um, then you've got all the plugs and the engines that go to the, um, the motor, okay? So put that one to the side here. And then what else do we have in here? So, looks like we've got some servo mounting tape for the electronic speed controller, some 3M tape. So that's great, one for the switch, one for the main unit. And then here we have the owner's instructions, so that's great. Which I know how to install, so. Anyways, we don't need a box, there we go. Put it off to the side, off to the side. So the last thing we need to make the Hornet move is a motor. This motor here. So I looked at all different kinds and I do like the Reedy motors a lot. And uh, this uh, Reedy motor, I think will fit perfect in the Hornet. It's not too powerful. Um, I think it'd be just right. And it's a 3,300 kV motor right here. A brushless motor, uh, uncensored. 540 SL4, 3,300 kV. So let's open this baby. This one's really uh, wrapped very good. I wonder how you do this. Looks like there's some tape here that we need to kind of undo here. There we go. There we go, snippy snippy, there we go. And then let's just, there we go. This one's wrapped really good. So here we go, take the box out. There we go, oh, look at that. And this is actually styrofoam that it comes in here. So when it's moving in the truck and getting transported, tra transportation, it's not going to get damaged. Transportated, I don't know what I said, transportated. I guess it's going to say transportated, but it's not going to get damaged. It's all lovely, nicely wrapped in this styrofoam container or box here. And then here's the motor. Oh, this this is a lot heavier. This is it's pretty heavy. This is a heavy duty motor too. So plenty of power. Hope it's not too much power for the Hornet, but we'll see. And it comes with some instructions too on how to mount the motor, but all motors are all mounted exactly the same. So don't need any of that, throw that away. Don't need a nice box, but get rid of the box. So here we go. So what we've got, we've got the motor now. We have the servo. We have the receiver. We have the electronic speed control. And we have the Gens Ace battery, okay? So here are all our electronics. Now, we need to put it all together, okay? Everything is wired and hooked up. I really like to take and do this outside of the buggy before putting it into the buggy, so I know that everything works. And so, I'll just explain how the system works. You've got the power source, which is a Gens Ace battery, and then it's plugged into via the little Dean's connectors, red to red, black to black, to the electronic speed control, which has a switch to turn everything on because this powers everything. It turns the battery on, which powers everything. And then you have this cable, electronic speed control, is generally uh, fitted into channel number two of the receiver. So the electronic speed controller into channel number two. Channel number one of the receiver is connected to the steering. That's typically how they are all set up. So channel one, steering. Channel two, electronic speed controller, okay? And be sure to kind of get the plugs in the right uh, direction, otherwise your buggy will shoot off in the wrong direction. Uh, and then the next thing is, is you've got the cables coming from the electronic speed controller that need to be hooked up to the motor. Now, one thing I don't like about Reedy is that, um, they're all black wires. There's no different color, so you don't know what's what. So I always take the center of the motor here and then plug it into the center, this, this one right here. You plug it into the center one of the speed controller 
the far left one, you plug into the far left of the speed controller, and then the far right one, you plug into the far right of the speed controller. So that's just simple like this. There you go. You see how that's wired? So this is all the wiring right here. So, okay, the first thing we're gonna do, now we've got everything wired up, is to bind the receiver to the transmitter. And this is quite an easy process uh, if you know exactly what to do. The trick is, is you make sure your receiver's on and it's in the binding mode, okay? It's, uh, it says bind on here, you can enter with that and make sure that's up and ready to go. And then at the same time, you go ahead and put your finger on the binding button on the receiver here. And at the same time, do not take your finger off. You will flip the switch of the electronic speed control like that. So now this is flashing blue, which is behind my finger right here. And then I'm gonna hit enter on my transmitter right here and it's binding. And then I'm gonna hit enter again. There we go. So now it's a solid blue. It was flashing, now it's solid blue, which means that this transmitter now has been bound to this. So we are in great shape. Okay, so after binding the receiver to the transmitter, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna program the Reedy electronic speed control, which is also fairly easy. And the first thing you need to do, it's all a series of green flashes and beeps. The first thing you do is you, you hold the setting switch, which is a little switch just at the bottom of the main switch. You hold this down, once again, you're gonna have multiple hands for this thing, and you hold it down like this, and you keep the finger on the settings button and then turn it on. And then you see how it's flashing green, okay? You're gonna let go of it, like that. And then you're gonna make sure this is in neutral, and you're gonna press it again, put it all the way to accelerate, press again, all the way to the reverse, and press again, and then back, and then it's solid green, it's not flashing anymore, okay? That's all you need to do. So, that's it. Let's see if it works. So if I've done everything correctly, everything should work. So let's see if it steers. Here's a steering servo. Oh yes, there you go. So it steers. Now, let's see if the motor goes. Can you hear that? That goes pretty good, I can feel it. Reverse, slightly slower in reverse, and then really fast. Oh, it's got some torque on that. Look at that, do you see it going in my hand? Oh, wow, that's good. But there you go. So, all the electronics here, the fan of electronic speaker control, that's another reason why I like these. It's got a built-in fan. Um, everything is working. So now what we need to do is we need to put all this into the Hornet. So we take the body off. Oh, isn't it a wonderful body? So we take the body off, and what we've got is we've got a big blank space, a canvas, and we've got to try to squeeze all these electronics into the Hornet. We know where the motor's going to go. It's gonna go in place of the motor that actually came with the kit. This is like an old uh, 550 motor, or the old Tamiya motors right here. They're not, they're not the greatest. I mean, they're nice for nostalgia, you know, but I'm gonna take this thing out and then I'm gonna replace it with this here, okay? So let's do all that. Okay, so if you didn't notice, I had taken the wheels off to the, put the motor in, and that's because I couldn't get the screwdriver to access the motor screws. But I've put the wheels back on, and now I want to see if the wheels move freely, and that everything is tightened up and good to go, and that everything is engaging correctly. Uh, one easy thing to do is just to kind of take the buggy like this, and kind of just run it along the ground. Yep, that feels good, okay? That feels good. It was a bit rough there to begin with, but you gotta let it kind of 
Engage, there we go. It just, it's, that's really smooth. That works really good. And then another good test is when you turn this wheel backwards, look at that. This means that the differential's working. The left wheel here, or this, on this side here, actually rotates forward. So go backwards on this wheel. That wheel rotates in the opposite direction. Same here, here we go. And then this wheel, this direction, and you see this wheel is going to go that direction. And then that's a differential. And so all that's working. And then so is everything's engaging like this. So I've got the motor in. The next thing I suggest doing is when you're doing this conversion is to see if the battery fits. And the uh, battery I've got is the Gen's Ace battery. It's a LiPo battery, 2S. And it just happens to be a bit bigger than the battery this chassis for the Hornet was designed for. So you have to make some modifications in order to fit this battery. So the best thing to do is then to try to install the battery before you do the rest of the electronic equipment, okay? You'll be able to show you can take the battery out too. Uh, so what I did here is it wasn't fitting. I had to remove a piece of plastic that was here, okay? Just like it is here, it was also here too. So I removed that plastic using this Dremel tool, this power tool. And boys and girls, be careful when you're using power tools. So I use this to carve that piece out. And then when I took that piece out, it allowed me to put the battery, install it from the regular installation place with this lid here, take this lid off, and then you insert the battery in there, and then you leverage it and then because the plastic's not here, you're able to jiggle it and jiggle the battery into place. Um, it took a lot of figuring out to do that. And another little bonus here is I've got a little pocket too here that's actually built into the Hornet chassis. And this is just look where the power cords can come from the battery here because these are fed from this side of the battery right here. So this works great. It fits snug as a bug in a rug. And then I've already attached the steering rods to the servo and I've already built up the servo here and attached this little plastic thing that comes with the kit or the uh, uh, the as assembled kit uh, you have to put this together onto the servo because of course this did not come with the car okay so now we're going to mount this with the little mounting blocks that also came with it and then we're going to mount this servo in this location like this. So the servo is going to be mounted in this location. But I've got some problems with how the battery is in here. So I'm going to have to do some spaces and everything. So this is going to be a bit of a task as well. But we'll figure it out. It just takes time and patience. A lot of patience. All you need is just a little patience. Yep, that's all you need. But we'll do it. Well, so when you're installing the servo, You've got to kind of dismantle this uh, wishbone suspension here by taking off this plate that kind of holds these in place. And I've already done that. Uh, it's actually exactly the same as the lunchbox. In fact, a lot of the parts on the Hornet are the same. This uh, uh, little uh, gearbox here is exactly the same as the uh, lunchbox. She has a lot of similar parts. It's from the same era, I guess. Uh, but what you're doing here, when you've done that, You've then got to turn this around. You've then got to take this servo and it's got, I've already connected the little arms. You've got to insert the arms down here and I've mounted the um, little blocks here that mount to the chassis actually in the lower hole. Do you see that? Not this hole, in this hole here. And the reason I did that is because the battery cables have to go across here and then this gives the space when it's mounted like this, like so. It allows a space for these cables to go over the battery like this, okay? So this will mount just like so. So the next thing we're going to mount is the electronic speed control. And we are going to mount this towards the back of the buggy. I've already put the servo tape on here. And we're going to mount this, I think we'll mount it this way here. So that these battery cables can easily hook up. And then this gives this room for these motor wires to wrap around and not get in the way and attach to the motor here. 
So here we go, we're going to be very careful and put this right here. Yeah, that fits great. And squeeze it down, hold it in place for a little while even though it's um, double-sided tape. Just kind of hold it there. There we go. So that's great. So we've got the electronic speed control in, we have the servo in, the battery, and then also the motor. And then next, we've got to find a location for the receiver. And fortunately, it is small. So I'm thinking the receiver might go right here, like so. Something like that. But before we put it on, we've got to check to see if the body fits here. Okay, well, uh, looking at this, uh, the front suspension on the Hornet um, is just not very good. It's just very, very, very sloppy. Um, it just bounces. I guess that's why it has the suspension of the grasshopper, right? Hops like a grasshopper. Um, I kind of want to correct the suspension both on the front and on the rear. And also, I would like to get rid of these little cheap plastic, you see those? Those little cheap plastic steering arms and replace those and also get rid of these little cheap plastic steering rods and these little plastic end bits right here. Just very, very flimsy. Just makes the car handle like, well, crap. And uh, so, anyway, these are the parts that I got. Got some uh, Jazz Rider. I have used these parts before. I like them very much. And these will replace the plastic steering angles here for the hubs here. So it'll be a lot better than this cheap plastic thing they've got on here. So I change it to aluminium. So that'd be great. Or aluminum. But they are blue. I don't know why they do always things in parts in blue. But anyways, got some of those. I've also got some new aluminium uh, suspension arms. So these plastic suspension arms here that are also prone to breaking if I remember back in the day. Uh, I've got some aluminium ones of these. So I'm gonna put these on the buggy. And these are made also by Jazz Rider. Wish these could have been black to go with these. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But anyway, Jazz Rider is a great product. I like, I like these products. But anyway, these look awesome. Can't wait to put these on the buggy. Uh, then also I have the suspension kit here, which I ordered off eBay. I don't know what brand this is, uh, some um, no-name brand, but I found these uh, to update the shocks on both the rear and the front. So we're gonna put these on the buggy. And then also here is the upgrade for the steering arms. You got metal uh, ball kits here with a lot better aluminium kind of holders right here instead of these cheap plastic ones like you on here. So these steering arms are going to be a whole lot better and they're going to work very nicely and play nicely with my aluminium uh, steering arms, arm brackets, whatever these things are called right here. Um, so we're going to put all this on the buggy and uh, hopefully it'll handle good. And one more thing, we also got one more thing for the rear suspension right here. We've actually got a stabilizer on by Redback Racing. And we're gonna put this also on the buggy. Uh, lots of upgrades. And then here we've got a ball bearing kit right here. So we're gonna replace all the plastic bushings that came on this with nice ball bearings, metal ball bearings. How about that? So all there is now is to get to it.
Well, look at this. Look at it. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? I love this new front damper here. Goes with the color scheme, like I said, of the Hornet. I even like this blue here. It actually looks pretty good. But here we've got aluminum arm. Check out the hardware. Even the hardware is better. All the attachments and how it's all linked together. And this aluminum arm here, it's just, it's just so good. It's, um, I just can't get over how much better it is than this cheap little steering arm that was originally on it. Just look at this, this linkage and everything. Uh, one thing, the only comment I have is that none of this came with instructions. So it took me about two or three attempts to get it all right. Thank God I kept the other arm intact, which I highly recommend. So I know which way all these go on to the arm. But here it is, ready to be attached to the car. So now I'm going to do the other arm and then put them on the, on the chassis. Ah, oh, exciting stuff. Okay, here it is. All the front suspension system is all finished. The steering arms are hooked up to the servo. Everything seems to be working nicely. And it all seems to be aligned. So I'm very happy with this. A lot better than the old one. Uh, so now I've got to put the wheels on. So here we go, just gonna oil this here. And then we're gonna put this wheel with the new bearings onto the shaft and thread it through like so and then get the old Tamiya wheel nut and put the nut onto the shaft okay here we go yes and get the old Tamiya T tool and then let's screw it in here oh perfect perfect Okay, that's one wheel done. Let's do the other one. At last, we are done with the front suspension and steering mod. It is a lot better than what it used to be. I can't wait to test this out. But all the front end is done. The aluminium wishbone bars are in here. The new shocks are mounted. And then the new steering arms are also done with the rods all connected to the servo. Here it is. It's a thing of beauty. Oh, but what are we missing? We're missing the back end. It's still the same old suspension that came with it. So next step is, is we are going to replace these and then put a stabilizer bar on the back too. And hopefully that will improve the handling. So let's do that next. Well, since I don't have instructions and I've got to try to figure this out, I went to the where uh, I went to the eBay page, and then looked up where I bought uh, the shocks and this uh, stabilizer bar from. And I'm just going to look at the picture. You see this picture? I'm just going to take a look at this picture and see how all this is screwed in, and hopefully, this will show me how to install it. No instructions again. Absolutely bonkers.
So here we go. The rear of the Hornet is now complete. We've got the new suspension, which is gold. Matches the front suspension that we just put on here. Gold. Uh, then we got this contraption, this sway bar contraption put on here, which was extremely difficult. Especially since we had no instructions. I can't believe there was no instructions with this for the price, okay? I don't know why. Maybe this video will now serve as instructions on how to put this part on the Tamiya Hornet. Because I tell you what, it is worth it. I spent about three hours doing this, just pulling it apart, putting it back on, putting it apart, putting it back on. But once it's on here, it looks fantastic. Look at this, look at the gold here. Just goes with the Hornet theme, doesn't it? And uh, just, just look at the sway bar here. Just everything about it is just, super cool and then the the action of the back the suspension action is perfect it feels really good it's clicking here because of this contraption back here but very very smooth very smooth so i'm excited let's see suspension look at that oh yes i think this is going to handle very good on the dirt oval so i'm really excited about it i'm going to put the tires on and then we're going to take a look at it as a whole. Whew! Well, here it is. It is finished. The finished, super modded Hornet. Yep, I think I'll call it super modded because we've done quite a few things to this old stock Hornet. So as you remember, we got it in the box. It came already made and I pretty much took it apart and added all these mods. Uh, first mod, we put in a brushless motor by Reedy. We put in an electronic speed control by Reedy. We put in a server, steering servo by Reedy. We also put in an ACE battery pack, um, a LiPo uh, 2S. Um, and that was a chore to get in, wasn't it? We had to cut the chassis apart, but we managed to do it. So as far as electronics go, complete new electronics, completely new. And then what else we done? Well, we've added new wonderful shocks here on the front. These nice golden shocks here and these nice golden shocks at the rear. We have also added a stabilizer bar on the rear of the Hornet here, which blends very nicely with the shocks. Look at that. Ooh, have you ever seen a rear end like this? Beautiful, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, just, just look at all the detail here. Isn't that amazing? That's really kind of cool. We also added aluminium um, Y-bone arms here on the suspension right here. Both of these two pieces right here, aluminium. Also, these little blue pieces right here, the steering arms, those are also aluminium. So, um, let's see what else. Um, oh yes, also the steering here. We've added super steering rods here because the other steering rods that came with it with little plastic ends, very cheap and shoddy. Um, this is a whole lot better. Fantastic buy that was. Uh, but this is a, a complete different Hornet than what I grew up with. Um, and I can't wait to take this out and try it on my dirt oval. Um, this is gonna handle pretty good, I hope. I hope all this work was worth it. Let's see to the track. Radio control cars, electric power to the wheels. Arc Escapes reviews, Arc Escapes builds. Arc Escapes modifies RC testing on the track. Arc Escapes discovers what they boast and what they lack. Steering cars remotely, building better machines. Testing cars around the track, remote wheel spinning dreams. Radio control, little cars will rock and roll. Race them in the dirt, race them on the sand, race them on the road, any surface on the land.
radio control cars, electric power to the wheels. Arc Escapes reviews, Arc Escapes builds. Arc Escapes modifies RC testing around the track. Arc Escapes discovers okay, what they boast and what they lack. Steering cars remotely, building better machines. Testing cars around the track, remote wheel spinning dreams. Radio control, little cars with rock and roll. Place them in the dirt, place them on the sand, place them on the road, any surface on the land. Yeah.